The reason why millionaires manifest money, success, wealth, prosperity, and they jump out of bed every morning. And these guys and gals that you just cannot stop. And by the way, not all millionaires are created equal either. But when the millionaire who establishes one biblical principle, and there's something different about this individual, there's something very different about this person, you're inspired by them, you're excited by them, outside of just the material success, outside of just the status and the influence they have, but more importantly, what they stand for is because there's one biblical principle called, here we go, vision. That's right. Let's talk about vision here real quick. What does scripture say about having vision? It mentions here in Proverbs, again, written by King Solomon, who's the wisest and richest king who ever lived. He says here in Proverbs, which can be found in the Bible, under chapter 29, verse 18, he says this, when there is no vision, the people perish. Let me read that one time. Without vision, the people perish. You perish, the people that you love and care about perish, the people you surround yourself perish, your community perish, perishes, why? Because there is no vision. You know, last week, I was with my mentor, Patrick Ben David. We're in Boca Raton. I'm sorry, we're in Palm Beach at the Breakers Hotel. If, you know, and anything about the Breakers Hotel, every president in the United States the last 100 years has stayed at this hotel. So millionaires go play around in Vegas, but billionaires go to the Breakers Hotel to create wealth. This is where billionaires hang out. And we're going over the Sales Leadership Summit, and the room was filled with other entrepreneurs. And I can tell those that had vision with their business versus those that did not simply by how they articulate their business. And the interesting thing about this group of entrepreneurs and other groups of entrepreneurs I've interacted with in the past is just by following certain things. Listen, United States of America, the world of free enterprise entrepreneurship and the right type of capitalism, you can make money here. I'm going to encourage you one more time with that saying, you can make money here. There's so many different ways. If you just Google on YouTube, how to make money, how to get wealth, how to get rich, how to make a hundred thousand, how to make a million dollars. You will find topics upon topics upon topics, how to get ahead, at least financially, but not all people that get ahead financially are all created equal. Why? Because there's one thing, vision. And you can sense people that have vision. You can sense people that are wired differently because it's not just for the meantime, it's just not for the now, it's for now and in the future. Lots of times people are so short-sighted with their vision. They think about right now how to pay the current bills. And by the way, the person that was a master at that was me. And because I was so worried about leaving the military, I was a single dad of three kids and I had raised them. By the way, my daughter's just turned 20 years old last Sunday. God bless my babies, Melani and Soledad. But my oldest son is 25. My twin girls are now 20. We have a younger son at 10 years old and now two years old. But as a single parent of three kids, I had a lot of worry about paying the bills, putting a roof over the head. And my vision was temporary. The conversation about me just paying the bills and making rent and making sure things are temporarily paid for so that I can push off and defer problems for the next week, two weeks, a month was all I was thinking about. The last thing I was thinking about was down the road. So that's why we encourage you, if you're a subscriber to the YouTube channel, Seven Figure Squad, that we want you to help think bigger and broad because we want to help you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire. So therefore, one day you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire by having vision. Why? Because I was in this room of entrepreneurs in many rooms, similar type of situation is a lot of people can get involved in business and be just good at sales. That's what I was good at for my first 11 years. I sold insurance. I sold insurance. I sold financial products and services, sales, 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 sell real estate, real estate, real estate, sell Bitcoin, sell Forex, sell whatever, gold, silver, whatever. Sell pain management services, stem cells, surgical services, chiropractic services, you know, commercial relocation, whatever. You can mean sales, sales, sales. That's singular, that's individual. But a person that has vision elevates to another level, which I consider becoming a leader. 
So not only a salesperson, but you're a sales leader because the sales leader then becomes a builder of men and women. They come and I'm a builder of people. Why? Because that's vision. And I'm always intrigued about my conversation with a lot of entrepreneurs. I ask them, give me the vision for your business. What's the vision for your business? What do you see in your business? And if it's just about product and how interesting their widget is, and they all can nerd out about what that you know, a conversation is about what they offer without understanding why or what the vision is of why this product or service exists in a marketplace, I can tell very quickly this person's gonna make a lot of money, but it's not gonna last. You can be an accidental millionaire, you can be a first generation cash flow millionaire, sure, anybody can get lucky, but if you want this to compound, you want this to grow, it just can't be about individual sales or just sales of the product or service. You gotta create leadership with your efforts because it's about building departments, building people, and more importantly, building a company, building a financial ministry, for lack of a better term for many of you, that believe that your business is a blessing to other people, not just for yourself individually, because that's also te thinking temporarily, but my people perish for a lack of vision. The second part of having a vision is become a visionary. Kind of like I was mentioning before, a vision serves other people, not just self-serving. And it's not, again, just about being a leader. It's about being a builder. Let's look here into what Jesus' prayer was for his people when he knew his days were soon to be over with. So let's read here what Jesus did here in John chapter 13, verse 7. And he's doing something that's low of the low of the low. He was conducting an act amongst his disciples that was worse than being a slave. That was worse than some of the lowest things in that society would be doing, which was the act of washing somebody's feet. Let's check this out in John chapter 13, verse seven. He says here, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you'll understand. No, said Peter, you'll never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Unless you allow me to serve you, then you don't have anything to do with me and what I stand for in terms of my vision. Verse 9 says, Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And then Jesus said, A person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. So Jesus was conducting an act here to serve his men, to show an act of servanthood, servant leadership. And you realize that just because you take a bath doesn't mean you're ultimately clean because you're not willing to get down in the trench and serve others. Because not just being a leader is becoming a servant and builder of other people around you. And we're looking at the third part about vision here is vision will be opposed because a visionary is a current liar. Because that vision hasn't manifested itself. Like for some of you, some of you say, you know, amongst your friends and family, I'm going to be a first generation cash flow manager. I'm going to pay off all my debt. I'm going to be financially free. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. For sure you are because you're being, being a visionary. And that's why people are opposing you. But if you're tapped into something that's eternal, not just temporary, then a lot of people will challenge that. And the biggest thing you got to do is continue to push back to as well. Don't be bullied thinking that your vision is something that you cannot manifest. Because if you read scripture, if you read the Bible, biblical principles are that you can manifest a vision that God has given you, a dream that God has given you, a purpose that God has given you that a lot of people may or may not understand. That's why God specifically and originally gave it to you. Do not expect other people to understand your vision and allow them to see currently right now temporarily what you see, because even though you see it, don't expect other people to see it too as well. Again, my CEO, my mentor of our, our firm, he's known as a visionary. He talks about things that a lot of people like, how can you think about this? How can you see things like this? Because he has tapped into the eternal aspects of his vision, not just the temporary aspects of the vision. And the crazy part about this vision, to hang around with visionary type people. Some people call this prophetic that if they choose to do the work, guess what happens? 
they end up manifesting that vision into a reality. I remember my wife, uh, when we first got started in business together, and she's like, babe, you know, man, you know, she's making you know, money selling hospital beds for a, a medical company. And even though she was making decent money at the time as a single mom, and we're, we're, we're a blended family, I was a single dad, she was a single mom, and she was having you know, success at her sales job selling medical equipment and, and hospital beds. But to our mentor casted her a vision that, hey, based on things that you know and that your current skills and your current work, work ethic, you can see yourself at 15000 a month, 20000 a month, 30000 a month in income. My wife's like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. And I saw this all happening. That our mentor was casting a vision of what can happen if you choose to realign those skills and abilities into something that has a better payout or opportunity in the industry that pays better, that you can manifest more wealth if you apply those same values and principles to something else. And next thing you know, $20,000 a month. Next thing you know, $30,000. Next thing you know, $40,000. Next thing you know, $50,000 a month. My wife's vision is blown away because these things are actually happening. The associations that are happening, the, the people that get invited to our events, like Magic Johnson, and the late, great Kobe Bryant, and former President George W. Bush, Kevin Hart, and we got Mike Tyson coming to our event. All these different folks that are attending our event because there's a vision laid out that we're gonna capture the attention of A-list celebrities and or influencers because of the magic of what we're doing in terms of establishing a business in our industry that serves the needs of the multicultural middle class has been overlooked and underserved, and that has been our vision. And because that has been our vision, guess what now? We started working towards it. We got opposed, got some pushback, not only from external sources, but also internal sources. Sometimes the people that we serve don't want to be helped. Isn't that crazy? And that's also biblical. How many times have we read here in the Bible when when, when, when God's people was being led out of Egypt in an exodus. And you guys know the story. God parted the Red Sea. People walked through the Red Sea. Egyptian armies coming after them to kill them. Red Sea comes back together, drowns out the Egyptian army. And even then, in the wilderness, people were free. People weren't enslaved anymore. People are still saying, I'd rather go back to being a slave because at least I have a little house and a little bit of food, because right now in freedom, we got to fend for ourselves. Isn't that amazing? So just because you think you're doing something right, your vision may be exposed, not just necessarily externally, but internally, but that doesn't mean your vision is wrong. That doesn't mean your opposition should keep you from manifesting that vision. Again, God gave you that vision. It's not for us to understand. It's not for anybody else to process and understand. But it's between you and God. I encourage you, if you are facing opposition, you're watching this video right now, guess what? It's probably a good thing that you're getting opposition because pressure and resistance creates strength. And the best type of strength that's created is that spiritual internal strength that God gives you to manifest the dreams and goals and desires that God has placed on your heart and your soul and your spirit to manifest.